Welcome to this session in our introduction to corpus linguistics. Today we're going to take a look at keyword analysis. The expression keyword is slightly ambiguous in corpus linguistics. You'll remember that a concordance search is sometimes called a keyword in context search, with the concordance node or search item being referred to as a keyword. In this session, however, keywords mean something rather different. Let's begin by reviewing what we've done so far. In our mini lectures, we've looked at word frequency searches in a corpus. We've attempted manual interpretations of concordance lines. We've looked at statistical analyses of collocation and colligation. And we've used Lawrence Anthony software and conch to look at concordance or dispersion plots. So we've done quite a lot. But we've been so far looking at the analysis of individual corpora, either COCA or BNC or time or whatever. What if we wanted to compare the frequency of occurrence of an item in one corpus with its frequency in another? And what if we wanted to ask ourselves if an expression occurs unusually frequently or infrequently in one corpus as opposed to another? For example, are certain expressions significantly more frequently or infrequently found in American or British corpora of an otherwise similar design? To answer this question, we could compare corpora using keyword analysis. So what is keyword analysis in the sense that we will use the term today? Keywords in this sense are those words that appear unusually frequently or unusually infrequently in one corpus with respect to another corpus. In other words, with keyword analysis, we are comparing two corpora, usually a specialized one and what we will call a reference corpus. Why are we interested in the words that appear unusually frequently or infrequently in a corpus? Well, usually the keywords will indicate something about the cultural predisposition of the specialized corpus. If we are comparing a specialized corpus of written business reports with a reference corpus of a more general language, for example, the words that appear unusually frequently in the specialized corpus will, we would hypothesize, tell us something about the particular discourse and culture of business reports. Also, the words that appear unusually infrequently in the specialized corpus with respect to the general corpus, what we will call the negative keywords, should also indirectly tell us something about the discourse and culture of business reports. When we talk about keywords appearing unusually frequently and infrequently, of course, we're talking again about using a statistical calculation of probability. Keyword analysis programs will use statistical formulae, such as log likelihood, to calculate those words that appear significantly more or less frequently in one corpus compared with another. In today's session, we'll use antconc again to determine keyness of the expressions in our corpora. To do keyword analysis using antconc or any other software program like Wordsmith, we need some basic data. We need a specialized corpus, corpus A, and a reference corpus, corpus B. Usually, but not always, the reference corpus is larger and more general than the specialized corpus, but this need not be the case. It all depends on what you want the keyword analysis to do. The nature of your specialized and reference corpora will be determined by your research questions and also practical considerations like access and copyright. Comparing a specialized corpus, corpus A, of news broadcasts to a balanced general reference corpus like BNC or COCA would show you significant lexis in corpus A compared to the language in general, for example, standard British English or standard American English. Comparing a specialized corpus of news broadcasts, corpus A, to a reference corpus of the same genre, corpus B, will show you the significant lexis in corpus A against language in texts of the same type. You could, of course, just compare parts of the same corpus. You could, for example, take the spoken part of COCA or BNC as your specialized corpus and compare that with the written part of the same corpus or the corpus as a whole. 
So basically, you need two things to compare, and you need to think carefully about exactly what you're comparing. For example, let's assume we're interested in the words that appear frequently in speeches by political leaders. We can build up a specialised corpus of leader speeches that we find on the web. For illustration purposes, we can download one. It's the one that we looked at before, the speech given by Alex Salmond of the Scottish National Party. We can download this from the web and save it as a plain text file. And if we want, we can add more texts of the same type. The next step is rather more complicated. We need something to compare the speech or speeches with. Now we could decide to compare the political speeches with a number of other types of corpora. Let's say general written language or general spoken language or soap opera discourse or anything at all really. We would find out what is distinctive about political speeches with respect to the other form of discourse. Remember that the choice of reference corpus is important. If you're comparing one thing with another, changing the point of reference will change the description. If you're comparing a duck with another creature, for example, then it matters whether you're comparing it with a camel or a snake. Some things will remain constant in your description, but the focus will change depending on what you're comparing your duck with. We have a speech by the leader of the Scottish National Party. So let's compare it this time with a reference corpus made up of more general political texts from Scotland. For this, we're going to select texts from the Scottish Corpus of Text and Speech, or Scots Corpus. We go to the Scots Corpus website, we click on Advanced Search, and then we choose from the menu Written, and then Text Type, and then Written Records of Speech. We can then select some of the Scottish parliamentary body texts that are in the Scots Corpus. We click on Download and Save as a zip file. We can then unzip the contents of the folder as plain text files, and then we can save those files as, let's say, a parliamentary reference corpus. Now remember that we will now be comparing a Scottish political leader's speech with a more general set of speech events in a Scottish political context. Now that we have our specialised and reference corpora, we can choose a text analysis programme like AntConc. With AntConc, we click on File and then Open File to upload the texts in our specialised corpus. Here, for the purposes of illustration, we simply have the one text, the Alex Salmon speech. Then you click on Tool Preferences and then Keyword Preferences and you will see certain options appearing. From these options, we can select a statistical measure of keyness. Like collocation, there are different ways of calculating this statistical measure. The most commonly used is log likelihood, but chi-square is another possibility. Here, we'll just select log likelihood. We can choose a threshold for the number of keywords to, to be displayed. Let's say we want to see the top 100 keywords. We can also choose whether or not to see negative keywords, that is, those words that have an unusually low frequency of occurrence in our specialised corpus, compared to our reference corpus. Now I find negative keywords interesting, so yeah, let's choose yes for that. Finally, from the options, we select our reference corpus in keyword preferences. If we have a group of files, we can choose a directory, that is a folder containing those files. This is where we can choose the parliamentary reference corpus folder that we downloaded from the Scots Corpus. Once we are confident that our reference corpus has been uploaded properly, we simply click Apply. Clicking Apply should take us back to Options on the main AntConc screen. There we click Words in the search term option. We click Treat all data as lowercase, we click Sort by Keyness, and finally we click Start. And if we're lucky, we get a set of results. Take a couple of moments to look at the list of words in the slide, which are sorted by Keyness. Positive keywords are on the left, negative keywords are on the right. How might we interpret these results? Remember that we're comparing one political speech with a reference corpus of spoken Scottish 
political discourse. Let's think about the positive keywords, bearing in mind again that we're comparing one political speech with a reference corpus of spoken Scottish political discourse. Given those points of reference, notice the unusual frequency of I and we, the first person pronoun, singular and plural. The frequency of I might suggest that this is a charismatic leader, and the, and the frequency of we might suggest a rhetoric of inclusion. If we do a dispersion plot, of I, we will notice that it intensifies in frequency towards the end of the speech. Even within the context of Scottish political discourse, uh, Scotland, Scottish and nation appear unusually frequently in Alex Salmon's speech, so we might wonder, is this a particularly nationalist speech? Again, uh, the main political rival in Scotland, Labour, that appears unusually frequently in this speech as does PROTECT and NHS, the National Health Service. So perhaps this is a speech that portrays the government as a carer, and the government as the protector of the NHS. And there are unusually frequent personal names. Jimmy seems to be an ally, while Cameron is the enemy. We might also take a look at the negative keywords and notice the relative infrequency of finance or cost in this speech. And also the word problem is used less frequently in Alex Salmon's speech than it is in Scottish political discourse more generally. So is this a political speech that avoids discussion of economics or avoids troubling aspects? Is it an upbeat speech? So you can take a look at the keywords and you can identify such suggestive findings, but keyword analysis on its own should be used with caution. And it's always advisable to combine this kind of analysis with a broader set of analyses. For example, having identified the key words in this speech, we can run concordance or dispersion plots on a sample of them to see where they occur in the text. This time we load our specialised corpus and choose concordance plot from the menu tab and run a word search for the keywords that interest us. Here I've chosen games, which occurs four times in the text, and I which occurs 77 times. The concordance plots will tell us where. The concordance plot for the keyword games shows us that the four occurrences are at the very beginning of the speech. The topic is one that Alex Salmon touches on at the beginning of his speech quite intensely, but it doesn't reoccur. By comparison, the pronoun I, which is a keyword, is dispersed throughout the speech. But even then, it is used with increasing intensity towards the end of the speech. Perhaps there's a sense of greater personal responsibility or agency being articulated as the speech goes on. We would have to go back and look again at the content to confirm this. But at least we know that I occurs unusually frequently in the speech compared to other spoken political texts, and that it is most frequently used towards the end of Alex Salmon's speech and we can think about what the implications of this might be. To sum up then, keyword analysis is used when comparing corpora. Statistical formulae like log likelihood or chi-square are used to calculate words that appear unusually frequently or infrequently in one corpus as opposed to the other. This kind of analysis can tell us something interesting about the content, style and or the ideology of the corpus. We can combine keyword analysis and other types of corpus search, for example, concordance or dispersion plots to increase our understanding of how the text works. Thanks again for watching. Now you can play around with your own specialised and reference corpora.